Call the meeting to order. Mr. Vieira? Here. Dr. Vogt? Here. Mrs. Wittes? Here. Dr. Sully will be late. Mr. Dangler? Here. And I hereby certify that this meeting has been published in the newspapers in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act and posted as required by law. Thank you. Item number one, discussion regarding tree conservation and the ordinance. Good evening, everybody. Okay, so um, there was a desire to uh, address uh, tree removal within the city. Um, I had the opportunity to, you know, study ordinances across the street, across the state, um, analyze them in terms of the capabilities of our department and what we could effectively manage and um, administer. So uh, essentially, what we established is a. Uh, process where someone would have to apply for a permit to remove uh, a tree over a certain caliper, uh, where that person would then have the opportunity to replace that tree with the tree that's on the approved species list, which was provided me, to me by the Environmental Commission. Um, those are deciduous trees that are native to this area. Um, so the, uh, the, the homeowner or the developer would have the opportunity to either replant with that species um, or provide a, a dollar contribution for the replacement of the tree. Now, is this just a residential, just a, uh, a typical homeowner, or the, the construction field too? It would be for both. For both? Yes. So anything we need to be aware of with that from your experience? Like you said, you spoke with other areas and you know, it pretty straightforward. Well, I, I came up with something that's very straightforward for us. You come in, you identify what you're removing, um, you tell us what size it is, and then we establish the fee structure or the re replanting uh, mechanism mm -hmm. uh, for the tree removal. So, yeah. This doesn't apply to, um, let's say, they have, homeowner has a tree that's about to fall on top of their house. That doesn't apply to that, does it? The danger? No, it specifically uh, exempts uh, dead, diseased, or uh, trees that cause a hazard to public safety. Okay. Who, who's the person that makes a decision on that type of request? Uh, that, that, would, that would be the zoning office. We do qualify every year a tree expert, tree expert or arborist. Yeah, I believe we do qualify every year. Yes. Is that correct? Yes, sir. So if there was ever really some issue. Okay. You know, I know the majority of the trees we see, it's pretty evident when you go out, there's trees dead, it needs to come down. But for those ones where it's um, you know on the borderline, there's definitely some people we could bring in if needed. But this will stop a lot of trees from being removed um, unnecessarily also. Well, it, it, it gives people the ability to remove the tree, but then there's a mechanism to replace the tree. Right. Right. And there also develops a fund that allows you to replace trees. So that's the other part about it is that, that that's, you know, that's part of the theory also is that you now have funds that you can use to plant trees other places. And then I like the fact that, that depending on the size of the tree that you're removing, you may have to replace it with more than one tree. Correct. So that, I mean, that's a positive thing too. The only question I have, like, is in, in the enforcement. So, for example, like Mario pointed out, let's say you have a dead tree in the back of your house, or that one's going to fall. Does that mean that that every individual then would still have to go get in a permit, and then an officer would have to come out and determine yes that's dead you can take it out or yes it's you know it's about to fall on your house and you can take it out you know what I mean how how does that work oh well, we could fine-tune that aspect of it but you know I think for a lot of things yet you, ha you have to you know go on the, the word of the homeowner or do the site inspection and see if the trees because the the dead or injured or hazardous tree 
that's what's exempt from the, the fee or the replacement schedule. So you'd still have to pull the permit to remove the tree. Now, when um, people go before the planning board, are they now given a list of the trees that um, have been you know, determined to do well in this area? I know the Environmental Commission was working on that list and everything. And um, will they be given that list as well? Well, this would then become an ordinance where if people were removing shade trees during their site plan or, or subdivision application process, they'd have to replace them with the native species. Okay. And then I also, you know, I, I know when I do my review letters for the board, mm -hmm. I recommend that the, the plantings be, you know, native species to the greatest extent possible. Now, the only uh, question that I have is, Typical homeowner comes to you and wants a zoning permit for the tree. Um, the lay in the permit, instead of once if they bring you proof, some kind of pictures or something, that the tree is dead already, would you be able to give the permit right away or do you have to have somebody inspect it? I think if they gave us photo documentation, we'd be able to issue the, the That's permit right. on the spot. Thank That's good. Thank you. Okay. Any more, any more questions? Thank you, Nick. I just, if, if this is the path that everybody wants to proceed on, I could work with uh, Lou's office on fine tuning, you know, a couple aspects of this and uh, getting it ready to uh, adopt if desired. Lou, do you have any experience with this in terms of? Uh, I, I think I wrote the first one in the state in Sayreville. Um, and I've written them, you know, I, they're in every town that I represent. So, yeah. and. Um, one of the things that we're seeing here, which is a, the part of the world that that's not Nick's part of the world, it's really more Mike's part of the world, is we should that's, there should be a you know a, a tree fund, and it should have some indication as to how it should be it should be used. So um, there should be, which means we don't have one now. No, we don't have. Any, we, okay. Well, we have a. This provision says that this, this it, it should go into a designated trust account, but we mm -hmm. really should have a provision in here creating the tree fund so that there is a. There is a trust account because it's the money's going to go in. It's yeah. Um, it, it's dedicated for that purpose. We have to dedicate it by rider. Is that what we're talking about, doing Mike? Here? If we create one. We will have to. Yeah. Yeah, we'll dedicate it by rider in the budget so that because otherwise any income you get goes into the general fund unless mm -hmm. it's designated by a rider to your budget to go into a specific account. But we should also have a provision here that says how it's spent because there's things that you can use. You have to decide what you want to use the fund for. You can use it just some. Some people use some towns use it just to plant trees on public property, and some use it to plant on private property too. So, um, yeah. I, you know, m my simplistic view of this is trees are trees, right? It's good to have them planted anywhere as long as you're planted in the city. You know, they serve, serve the same purpose, right? So, um, so we try to make it as broad as possible to give you the ability to, um, you know, to use the fund and however it is that that you think is appropriate. My experience with this is that most towns have very big tree funds and can't figure out what to do with them. So you, 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 if you're going to collect this money, I mean, it's not, in, not insignificant. I mean, I have, you know, towns that the, the, the number is $300 in a tree for a three-inch tree. I mean, it's a big number. So when you go in and you have somebody that had to, you know, clears an acre and a half of land, you know, talking about a pretty sizable check that's going to get written. So now you have this money, but you have to decide what you want to do with it. That's a policy question that you have to have. Can that money be used to, like for other things, such as like the community gardens and things like that? Well, you can if you if you want to. Um, you you have to. So you, you can't just this can't just be a method of raising taxes, right? So you can't use it generally. So there has to be some con causal connection to. Um, you know, it, it, you're, the, the theory behind this is you want to diminish the number of trees that get that get destroyed, and you're collecting funds for the purposes of replacing trees. Right. So if you stray too far from that, mm -hmm. you know, if you use it to paint the municipal building, then somebody could come in and say, okay, so this is just a tax, right? It's not anything other than a tax. It's got nothing to do with administering this uh, fee, and it's got nothing to do with actually replacing trees. So you really have to, you can't stray too far from that. Right. Because it's for this specific the purpose. The primary goal is to replace the trees Correct. with the funds. Correct. If in the event that there's 
you know, an overabundance of funds, then maybe we can, you know, use it, you know, on the gardens or things yeah. like that. Well, look, the, 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 the answer that I'm, I'll, I'll tell you the, the technically correct answer, the technically correct answer is that if you're, if you're raising this money and you're not spending it, then you're raising too much money. Right? You should be raising money that you're going to spend. So I always tell people that if you're going to do this, you should do it with a thought in mind that, you know, we could have $50,000 in the first year, what are we going to do with it? Now, I don't know if you have a shade tree replacement um, policy, you know, what you, you know, when you fix sidewalks, you're going to have to take trees down because the trees are what destroys the sidewalks, you can plant smaller trees, and you can use this money for that, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Or if you're doing park improvements and you can, um, you know, if you were going to, build some new facility and you decided that you were going to landscape it and put trees around it, you could use this money to, to offset those costs. Oh, okay. But that's what you should, you should try to key to that. Um, you know, a community garden is probably not too far afield, but like I said, if you if you told me that you were using it to construct bathrooms by the beach, I would tell you that you probably shouldn't use the money for that. Because all that happens is that then, then some somebody will come in, by the way, like I said, these are significant checks, somebody will come in and say, Hold oh, a second, I'm not writing a fifty thousand dollar check. This ordinance is you're using it to, you know, yeah. right. to pay for people in the finance department. It doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. So um so is this really part one of another presentation that needs to happen? No, we're we'll put the, we'll put all of this in the ordinance. It's just that we're we're doing this and it at, at you know, at the time comes when you're when you go to do your budget, right? You're gonna ha you're gonna you know, Mike's gonna say to you, you know, by the way, you've got, you know, Forty-two thousand dollars in your tree fund. What what is it that you're going to do? And, and the administration will have to you know, start to develop the plans for using those, and then come to you and say, you know, as part of the budget process, we want to appropriate forty-two thousand dollars to pay for a shade tree program, and we're going to charge it against the tree fund. So um, let me just explore, just comment on why I asked the question. That you know we have the whole process explained uh, uh, and detailed up front, rather than part of it and then when it's you know yeah. when we're faced with a the next situation yeah. it's like oh well we didn't document that that's why I asked the question mm -hmm. um, yeah we, we'll get the ordinance in a form so that it'll be in place to start to collect the money and then it's like anything if you're gonna you know if the initiative is to plant more trees and that's what you should do yeah um, I, I in, a, in a couple of towns I've spoken to and I and I haven't gotten anybody to do it where they have you know I have towns that have hundreds of thousands of dollars in a tree fund and I always thought that it wouldn't be a bad idea to just go out and get a contractor who you bid out to you know how much will it, you charge the town to plant you know X kind of trees and just say to and then just let people you know give them to people to plant trees in their yards because my theory is planting trees is planting trees, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, mm -hmm. You're going to take trees down, you're going to plant them, and it's, a, it's almost a nice benefit to give to people as long as you're planting trees, you know. Uh, and we all know we've all put trees in our backyards are not cheap. It's a really good tool, too, to replace street trees. And right, that's the, and well, that's the, that's the first reason this stuff is designed, mm -hmm. is to replace street trees, especially if you do sidewalks, because you have our kids, you know, it's a big cost. Street trees and trees and parks are the yes, main that's where the you start. Yeah. benefits. So if the goal is to uh, replace trees, not only to replace them, but to, re to replace them and add to them, right, uh, more trees, mm -hmm. then the question is if somebody has 50 trees in their front yard, they have the option to just pay the amount for 50 trees and then I would assume that we would be obligated, or someone would would, control, would make sure that those 50 trees that are lost there would be would be put somewhere else. Is Correct. That, is that the idea? Yeah, you, you the either idea? have to pay it to the fund or you have to replace the trees. Right. So if you're so you'd have to kind of keep it. You wouldn't go into uh, cabanas or yeah, yeah. You wouldn't want to stray very much. No, you'd want to use, use it for trees. You want to use it yeah, for trees. Yeah, Replacement and adding to. Right. Yeah, because the underlying legal basis for it is that you're going to replace trees. That's what there's been cases that have challenged these ordinances, and as long as there's that there's a relationship there. But if it just looks like you're using it to raise money, right. then it just right. they mm. just consider it's just a tax, and you're not authorized to tax people for this purpose. Okay. So 
Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Ruth. Discussion for the ordinance or single use of plastic bags. So I've, I've circulated, the, we, we had a presentation, I've circulated a draft ordinance. Um, we should all be aware, by the way, that there is a bill that is moving through the legislature. My understanding is that it's going to, it's, uh, it's in Senator Smith's committee, I, I, and I think he's the prime sponsor. Uh, my understanding is that there is going to be a, a state law that's going to going to get adopted in, um, in the lame duck session of the legislature. So that means between now and January 14th. Um, and um, the governor's committed to sign it. So um, we're moving ahead with this ordinance, understanding that there's a possibility that that state law might preempt whatever the ordinance is. If the state decides that they're going to do X, Y, or Z, that's what will control. So but, but we, have a, we have a draft ordinance. It's based upon a recommendations from the Environmental Commission and then some ordinances from surrounding communities and, and so we put it together. I don't know if anybody has any questions on it. Yeah, I think it's pretty, I think it's pretty clear. Yeah. Okay. So um, I, I think we have a wonderful opportunity for a civic lesson to um, go back to the students that came to us at that council meeting at some point and you know uh, however we do this um, if we do it in the school or if we ask them to come to the council meeting to show them that we listen to them and that what they presented was a very important point and this is how it's moving forward. Just a civics, I think it's a great opportunity. How, when, whenever we do it and however we do it. It's just my suggestion. And, and, the only, and there's a couple of things that are, that are in here and um, that I wanted to, obviously it's, this is all a draft, but um, there is a grace period. Mm -hmm. I, I'm trying to think in Atlantic Highlands. In Atlantic Highlands, it might have been a year, but it gives people a period of time to, to use it. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, that's, I just put date, so you'll have to decide what that date is that you want to, uh, yeah. <clears throat> you know, how long you want to give people. Um, so, yeah, so, so um, Lou, the, the only thing that kind of caught my eye was uh, the enforcement piece. Uh, which I think will be a little bit challenging. And there was one part that just said, um, if the, uh, I probably don't have the wording right, but the way I read it, I thought it implied that if the code officer is informed of, you know, um, of, of a, you know, a, a, a store or something in violation, that then they would um, pursue that. So is it kind of like that pa passive kind of enforcement that, um, or the code officer would have to be enforced rather than a more aggressive kind of. Well, we would we do all of this by code enforcement. Um, there's a perfect. I think what you might be referring to is there's a provision in here that says that that, that a, a citizen can act as a complaining witness. Right, so if right, a citizen right. came in and said, "Look, there's a business down on the street," right. and the code enforcement officer didn't see it, the citizen could sign that. Could be the complaining witness also. Mm -hmm. So it'll be a combination. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, well, uh, just just a comment because I, um, I had already tried with 7-Eleven, you know, like probably two months ago to say, why do you keep having these plastic straws, you know? And, and it, you know, it goes back to the idea that, well, corporate, um, you know, that's what they buy for all 7-Elevens. So it'll, it'll be a little bit challenging, but so just that comment. The state statute also banned paper bags too. It was going even further. I saw that. Don't, don't know. Yeah. Okay. So the the bill got pretty close to getting on getting posted for a vote, and then my understanding is that that issue is what has yeah. held up the discussion. And I have no inside knowledge as to how that all is going to play out. But that's just what I hear. <laughs> okay. Is that code? That's code. That's that's no. It's serious. <laughs> it's serious. No, I, I think that, that I think that that issue. I, yeah. I I read it in the Star Ledger that the yeah. paper bag part of it is the part that it was about to go to to get onto a board list to get voted on, and that it, that kind of that was that part of it was being reworked in committee. Is my understanding. 
So it says the um, street vendor on here. Does that pertain to like when we have events mm -hmm. as well? So that's yeah. inclusive of everything. Sure. By the way, I want to thank the people on the apartment. Yes. Yeah, it was very helpful you. to me in getting, yeah. getting, that, um, getting this done. Thanks. Review of the regular <coughs> meeting agenda. Any questions? No. Um, I, I, I had a question, and, and Mario, I thought uh, this actually went back to a conversation that you and I had um, in terms of the parking. Didn't you ask that the time be changed yeah, from 8 that, to 9? Uh, the answer that the, uh, the, if we were to change it, we would have to postpone because uh, we already had the reading, so we'd have to redo the whole. Uh, yeah, we'd have to re-advertise it. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a substantive uh, change. So we agreed that we've been talking about this long enough that we need to move yeah. forward. Okay. And then commute with Bill, communicate yeah, with us, and, uh, and the mayor. Okay. Any other concerns or questions about the agenda? What does it mean to be the official newspaper of the city? So you're required by state law to designate a <coughs> newspaper in, in, in which your official public notices are published. So when we publish the notice for the year of the council meetings, you have to publish it. When we advertise the for public hearings on ordinances, you have to advertise in the official newspaper. Okay. And it's a very convoluted and way as you know in the old days it used to be any newspaper that was published in your municipality and everybody had one but these days there aren't so I don't know we usually probably do the star ledger and who we do the Asbury Park, Park Press, Press and the link and the link yeah. but it, it's designated by state law as to what newspapers qualify as official newspapers okay so as long as you do it in those particular right. ones right. then, then so if you're gonna you have a zoning board application you have to put it, you can't put it in the daily news you'd rather put it in the official newspaper. What about um, like word on the shore the ones that are on the internet? How does that? The, um, they have not, um, the legislature has not authorized internet newspapers as being official newspapers as of yet. They're printed, they literally say printed and published. Oh, okay. It is a, um, it's one of those things where if you want to cause a firestorm in Trenton, uh, introduce a bill that's Changes publications being from newspapers to online. Yes, yeah, that's, so, that's true. Yeah, because <laughs> it was attempted, right? It was attempted because you know the one thing. The first thing they teach you in politics is you never fight with people who buy uh, uh, ink by the barrel. So, uh, the, my understanding is that the newspapers in the state get something like twenty million dollars a year from advertisements. You know, sheriffs, municipalities, county, and it's a huge income stream for. An industry that needs the income stream, so they have not authorized it yet. So I'm just we can, if you want. It's just not official. And 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 the New Jersey New, New Jersey Press Association reproduces every public notice on their website. You can go to the New Jersey Press Association website and search for public notices by municipality. Oh. So they they they, they are uh, they are available there. Yeah. It's just that they're not the official. Um, just one last question, and uh, this is just a thought. You know, we changed the time for the workshop from starting, used to start at 6 to start at 5.30. Um, do we want to stay to 5.30? Just throwing it out there Versus as a thought. What? Now that we're a little more disciplined than our... 3.30. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking 4, but... I'm not, no. I'm not making a comment. <laughs> I'm just putting it out there. She's sitting next to me. <laughs> take, that, take that, you know. Let's, let's see, two more years. Bring that back up. Okay. Towards the end of the two years. Okay. All right. No, we don't want, I don't think we want to change that. Okay. I just. I mean, we can do it at 6 30. You want to go up to 6 30 instead of 5 30? Well, it was 6 30. Right? Didn't you change it to 5 30? It was 6 30. Yeah, I know. I'm just kidding. Yeah. I'm just kidding. I'm not. Oh, kidding. Right. Okay. Yeah. okay. Well, I don't, are you suggesting something? No, I'm not just saying, do we, do we still feel that we need the, the hour and a half, or do we think that an hour is sufficient? Oh, That's all I'm putting out there. What do you think? Need the time. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think we've got to keep it as it is. Okay, all right. The census says, make it easy on yourself. Okay, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> we've really become a team, I'm going to tell you. That's nice. To <laughs>
Okay. Um, can I have a motion to uh, close? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. So, I need a motion to adopt the resolution going to executive session for the following items. Contract negotiations, 2020 insurance renewal, Ocean Gate, and attorney client privilege. So Second. Mr. Vieira? Yes. Dr. Vogt? Yes. Mrs. Wittes? Yes. Mr. Danovich? Yes. 